does to me. But these are possibilities that it could have looked like him. Now, why is he so important? Well, because, and it's my opinion, that this is the most important person ever born to speak the English language. What? Well, there's a reason for that. Because he may not have created all these phrases or these words, but he had such an ear. And I'm saying he. <laughs> it's a general term. That he is the first time in his writings that these words appear in print or these phrases ever appear. There are thousands of words that never appeared before he used them in the English written records of the day or in, in writings and these phrases. So these are just a few of the things that have become a part of our daily life. And it's almost impossible to get through a day without quoting William Shakespeare. Uh, knock knock, who's there? Yeah, the first recorded <laughs> knock knock job. That's right, it's in, it's in back bed. <laughs> Set your teeth on edge, heart of gold, good riddance, faint hearted, fight fire with fire, see better days, too much of a good thing, send it packing. Wear your heart on your sleeve, not slept one week, come what may, for goodness sake, the game is up, what's done is done, full circle, green eyed monster, made it bare, vanish into thin air, be all end all, out of the jaws of death, that is a doornail in a pickle, fair play, foul play, brave your world, make your hair stand on edge, the world is my oyster, goose chase, wild good chase, off with his head, lie low, a sorry sight of peace and work, heart of hearts, vanish into thin air, green eyed monster, laughing stop, be all end all, that's just a few of them, oh, and this list? That's a few of the words that really the first time we see it ever in our language is from William Shakespeare. If it is William Shakespeare. <laughs> right? So, what does this mean? Well, if this is this huge influx of language, does language in some way Manipulate behavior? Well, if that's true, we've all been touched. We've all used these words. We've all, in some way, used words that seem to be coming from this source. That's manipulated our behavior. Just like an architect manipulates our behavior with the space <coughs> and how we deal with the space. Doesn't language manipulate who we are and our identity? Well, I kind of think so. So to me, and that's why I say that, um, and he just, he created, invented, or collected hundreds of words and phrases that are still used today. Almost impossible. Yeah. Uh, some, I did have some handouts. I didn't know how many people might come, but you might be able to share with those. And we'll get to those later. And... Uh, He's still been shaping our lives through this language for 400 years. Now, formerly, the Bible and the collected works of Shakespeare, it used to be that was the measure of someone who was educated. You had those two books in the house, and you were familiar with both. And there's actually links between them. There's even um, Anthony Burgess was one of the people who supported the theory that Shakespeare was brought in as an advisor when those 11 scholars, those 11 great biblical scholars, were called in by King James, right, to do this new translation. And uh, there's one of the Psalms that begins with a double and ends with an S. And if you count, oh God, uh, 43 words down. Anyway, but all that cryptography you can prove about everything with the Bible if you try to. Plug it in the right way. But it is possible. He was certainly the most successful writer of the time and the most successful poet of the time. So better to be able to look at something like the Song of Solomon or Ecclesiastes or Psalms and Proverbs, which are beautiful pieces of writing. Now, uh, his language and his plays have provided a pretty remarkable window into the period and into our history. Uh, now, I don't know if you know the story or not. Ding dong, 
Avon calling. Remember that? Yeah. Anybody? Your mama ever take you to uh, one of those Avon parties? Well, where does that come from? Well, there was this guy at the turn of the century, or the 20th century, who would travel around door to door, and he would sell collected works of William Shakespeare. Only they weren't as popular as these little prizes of toilet water that he gave away. Well, those kind of took off, and nobody was buying the collected works of William Shakespeare, so that became Avon and Ding Dong, Avon Calling. That's where that comes from. Yeah. Um, okay, the King James Bible, I mentioned that. Now, the King James Bible uses a vocabulary of around 8,000 words. In William Shakespeare's canon, he uses over 15,000 words in a vocabulary. Uh, he invented somewhere around 1,700 words that are still in use today. Maybe he didn't invent them, but he heard them, and he collected them, and he used them. Well, there's one thing that really connects us over the centuries that I think is really remarkable. What happened in 1969 that changed everything? Thank you very much, God. I appreciate that so much. I just I say that to my students, and I just stare. <laughs> the Civil War, 1800, never mind. Uh, okay, 1969, the moon landing. We had an extraordinary explosion of interest in exploration at that time. Well, the same thing was happening 400 years before, and it was the same idea, the new world. The Spanish Armada, 1588, the Tempest. Now, the Tempest has always been, almost been this sort of symbol for the Elizabethan age as like a definitive moment in uh, the sort of self-esteem of English because God likes us. He sent that Armada, which they were going to burn England to the ground. He sent them to the bottom of the ocean with that tempest. God likes us. We're the chosen people. Before the English had been almost considered the dogs of Europe. But this is exploration happening that's very much in the same way. The new world. Now I've walked the streets in London where they used to have the booksellers where his hot little hands got a hold of these things like Richard Hacklin's record of the voyage to the New World for the Jamestown Colony, where they were blown off course and they wind up in this paradise. They can't stay there because they'll get butchered by the Spanish if they get caught. So then they leave and they go to this swampy, marshy, ill-mannered, uh, Ill uh, mosquito-infested place called Jamestown <laughs> and found that colony. But these records came back and were absolutely fascinating. And you can almost see where he read these and was inspired by them. This new world, an isle in the still vexed Bermuda. That's what he described Prospero's island as. A still vexed Bermuda? He's talking about the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> but he's really also referring to an island off Crozet Creek, but kind of melding that with this other place. What was the first English speaking colony in the new world? Was it Jamestown? Roanoke? Yeah, you got it. Roanoke, back home. Mantio. I've been all over this place. But this was, and, and uh, Sir Walter Raleigh talked the Queen into it. And they come over here, and first they do a military <laughs> setup, and that, that really did not go well. And then they send colonists over, and uh, he's reading about sort of thing. And so that's one of the inspirations for the Tempest itself. This island in the still vex for moves. He was talking about really Mantio. And also the residents of there that they found. I mean there's quite an extraordinary civilization already there with Native Americans. But they were considered to be cannibals. And so yeah, there's that. Uh, but that's <laughs> Oh, by the way, Columbus, <laughs> when he comes over and discovers a new world, he sails into the harbor and these natives come out and he thinks he's discovered. He 
He's gone all the way around the world, and he's saying, where am I, where am I? And they're shouting back, Guadalajara, Guadalajara. It means, we don't understand you. And that's what he called the place. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> so there he is, and there's home for me, North Carolina, the Outer Banks, and uh, they thought that they were cannibals, and he actually used that, and well, there is uh, back home, the first child born in the New World, Virginia Dare, on Mantigo. And the first governor of this colony was John Green. He was an artist. And he drew lots and lots of paintings of the natives and the culture and all that. And these also come back and are printed and are read, consumed by William Shakespeare. Uh, that's a close-up of it there. But uh, these are some of the, the paintings and some records from John Green. Uh, <clears throat> now, he, uh, they're having bad. So he gets on the ship and goes back to go to beg for supplies, to beg, but he doesn't, he gets stuck there for, because of the war with Spain, and it takes him years to get back, and when they do come back, uh, the colony is gone. Uh, but these are some of the paintings of the records of the, uh, and also, they discovered the black drink over here. Uh, now, it was more like oak leaves and chicory and roots and stuff, but uh, they thought, ooh, you know, I think there's money in that. We should call it Starbucks. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> coffee became a huge, huge thing thereafter when it was brought back uh, to England. But these are some of the natives that were painted by that original. Now, that we had our, our own way of dealing with natives. Mostly we tried to enslave them and torture them into, into uh, obedience and serving and cutting off limbs was a very important uh, way to convince them of that. Uh, but when they finally do come back, the colonists have disappeared from a toll that's carved on a tree. And that is supposedly uh, where the uh, colony was, this monument there. Now we, and the idea that these natives were cannibals was very prominent in uh, the stories back. So he takes the name cannibal and he creates an anagram from it, and that's Caliban. Caliban, let's see if I remember this one. This silence mine! My sacred axe, my mother, which thou takest from me! When thou camest first, thou made us to watch me with strokes, and gave me water with berries, and it showed me, and taught me how to name the big life, and how the lesson had burned by day and night, and then how I love thee, and showed thee all the qualities of the isle, fresh, spring, bright, and every place and fertile. Curse me, I that did so. All the charms of Sycorax, toads, beetles, bats, light on you. For I am all the subject that you have, which first was my own king, and you, you starved me in this hard rock, want you to keep me the rest of the island. You taught me language. My prophet ought is I know how to curse the red plague. Rid me for learning me your language. 400 years. He made him American. He forecasted. He could see it coming. And that's the way that they were treated. Huh. I'm surprised I remember that. I didn't remember that. <laughs> All right. One minute time. Yeah. <laughs> I leap and jump about, and my students really do not know what to think of that. <laughs> well, London, time. And there's the globe. You see it? Now, in the afternoon, they would fire cannons. They would wave flags. <clears throat> they would send out cries. They would post it. But you know, coming over London Bridge, which is what they would be doing, over to the South Bank, because they pushed all the theaters over there. You know, that theater, T-I-G-I-T-R-E, the first 